I think that way too many people define our society in terms of capitalism and socialism. And not enough people talk about corporatism, which is the belief that there's just too close of a relationship between big businesses and the government. If you look at Obama's advisory board, most recently he fired Paul Volcker and replaced him with the CEO of General Electric. It's clear that Obama's not any sort of genuine socialist who's trying to get rid of the current corporate structure. I think the word's a complete misnomer. As it is, corporations support the government with money, lobbying, campaign contributions, buying bonds. And in exchange, the government protects these corporations from risk and competition. These corporations have such limited liability that they overinvest and artificially inflate the prices of goods and services, looking for some sort of speculative gain. And when it becomes clear that the economic growth can't be sustained, people start calling in their debts and bank deposits. But so much money is tied up in assets that there isn't enough liquidity to settle all the debts. People go on a selling spree to try to get money in their hands however they can to pay off all the debts that are being called out. And this bear market causes all of the prices to tumble. The boom-bust cycle is made so much more destructive due to the corporate privileges. They're not punished for their bad investments. These corporations are too big to fail? Well, I think that really means they're too big to exist. And I think really the first step in solving this crisis is to end all of these government privileges and protections that allow these corporations to get so big. In addition to ending all of the subsidies and corporate welfare, we have to get rid of all the arbitrary licensing and permit requirements that prevent small businesses from competing against big corporations. Just recently in Isla Vista, there was a law passed that prohibited people from collecting cans. Well, that, that was only helping things. Students don't have the time or maybe are just too lazy to put in the effort and recycle cans, whereas these enterprising peoples try to start their own businesses individually. And even collecting cans is a business, but now they're being prevented by arbitrary government licensing and, and the like. We have to end all of the zoning laws that increase overhead so much and make it so expensive to start new businesses. Our government gives in to the corporate demands to create wage jobs, but if it simply got out of our way, we'd be able to work for ourselves and be independent proprietors rather than wage slaves. Technological developments are already making it easier to become independent, especially the internet and other electronics. Putting out written publications, for example, used to require a huge amount of investment in printing presses and other manufacturing tools. And photography used to require an expensive studio and a big darkroom. Now we can do it all digitally for a fraction of the cost, and we can publish our work for free on the internet. In addition, as a result from the shift away from the manufacturing economy toward the service-based economy, Education and skill have become much more valuable in comparison to machine and physical tools. The means of production have become so cheap that they are within most people's grasp. The capital-intensive mass production of generic goods has become less and less profitable in a society of overabundance and overproduction. Instead of putting out high-quality products that are custom-made to the customer's demands, it has become so important to put out a unique product that can't be easily substituted or replaced by another product. And as a result, the investment in education is essential in a society where the unskilled are left behind.